You are listening to Down Home. This is part two of our discussion about the north end of Halifax. In part one, we talked to Corey Chandler about the cultural impact the North End had on his upbringing in the 80s. If you haven't listened to that episode, it can be found in the episode list. My stepfather and longtime North End resident, Peter Henry, joins us for part two of our discussion about the North End. We will be exploring the structural, demographic, and cultural changes that have taken place in the North End over the past several decades. Welcome to Down Home, the Nova Scotian experience by two black men. I'm Derek Wise, and as always, we have Jason Jones. What's happening? And this week, we have my stepfather joining us, Peter Henry. Uh, Peter is a professor of architecture at Dalhousie, a longtime uh, independent business owner and resident in the North End. How's it going, Peter? Hey, Derek. Hey, Jay. Nice to see you both. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm well. I can't, I can't think of how many years I put D- Derek and Jay together in the same sentence. <laughs> you guys have been friends. It's so sweet. You guys have been friends for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long we certainly time. have. Yeah. We're yeah. getting old now. We're getting old. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Jay, tell me about it. <laughs> So uh, we're talking about the North End, and and um, I don't, I can't remember how far back it's been, but uh, I, I, I remember the first time we moved into the North End, it was Creighton Street, and then you, me, and Mom, we went to, we moved into Bilby, and then uh, from there we went um, close to where the house is. What street was that? I forget the name. It was up on Devonshire Avenue. It was a little apartment just around the corner from the house that we bought in 1986. Yeah. So Derek, we've been here a long time. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Which I quite like. You know, pe- a lot of people have the idea of a starter home. You know, they'll go here and then they're going to get a better house and then they're going to get another one. I've never thought that. I like the community. I like where we live, and ha- have no aspiration uh, to move out of the community at all. Yeah, you, you, and you guys also put a lot of work in that over the years. You know, so, well. Derek and his cousin Corey and and Heather and I the first year we did a, a, a huge amount of work yeah 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 so o- over the years like I've, I've been gone like I moved to Australia in 96 97 so I've been gone for a long time but you know what what sort of changes have you observed over that t- over that time period in the north end like, you know, whether it be structurally, culturally? Well, I, I think the changes have been, have been profound changes. Uh, when, when we all moved into the, into the neighborhood, um, we lived, as you'll recall, there quite close to Mulgrave Park, one of the big project areas in Halifax, the, so the projects, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you, the people you would see walking up and down the street were primarily indigenous black uh, residents. Uh, and that has changed quite dramatically over the years. Um, there are a lot. There are a lot now. A lot of immigrants living in the projects. Um, they tend to be black immigrants, but you can tell from their colorful headgear and their uh, and and their language, of course, that they're not uh, indigenous people, mm-hmm. uh, or at least not indigenous to this part of the world. So that's one change. Um, you know, the G word gentrification is always thrown about mm-hmm. and with, ju- with wonderful justification. When, when we moved into the community, for example, you'll recall the Hydrostone commercial area, not too far from where we live. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were a couple of boarded up shops in there. There was a, a bad little hardware store, a laundromat where your clothes got dirtier, not cleaner. <laughs> And and uh, today you have to fight your way through the BMWs and the Mercedes to get your little piece of sushi for lunch. Wow! Uh, the whole tenure of the community of that part of the, of the community has changed hugely. And, and 
lots of folks will say, yeah, and isn't that great? Mm, not, not everybody thinks this way. Uh, it, it, certainly, if, you're, uh, if your idea of going out for lunch involves spending $24 for uh, a plate of sushi, I guess it's a good thing. If your idea of going out for lunch is to go to, I don't know, the fish and chip shop and spend $4 for, for F and C, uh, maybe it's not so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it is, it, gentrification always looks pretty. You know, the photographs are always nice because the houses are newly painted and the, the cars are now, they're now better cars in front of the houses. Yeah. Uh, but, but who's living in these places and who can afford to live in them? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know that that's really at the heart of why you've asked me to, to speak today or to have this conversation today. Yeah. Um, but but it, it, it is a profound and, and insidious kind of um, process that cities go through, mm -hmm. neighborhoods go through. Um, so what, I, do you, what do you think is at the root <clears throat> of these changes though? Because um, there is natural, every city goes through a natural ebb and flow where, you know, residents get older and, you know, they might um, decide to, or, you know, people grow up, they might decide to go to the rural areas because they, they, they perceive the, the fact that they want more uh, space for their families or whatever. And then the, the kids grow up, they move out and then the, the older people say, oh, we have all the space, maybe we should move back downtown to a little apartment. So there's always that type of ebb and flow. Um, is, is that what you've, you've noticed in, in uh, the peninsula there in the North End? Well, that always all sounds fairly benign, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. that, that just sounds like kind of the natural order of things. And um, I, uh, your mother and I were watching a Richard Pryor special this morning. You might have been watching it too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, he was talking about racism. Uh, and he said, well, at the core of racism is the issue of capitalism. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's obvious you could have racism without capitalism and you could have capitalism without racism, but they fit together really nicely. Mm. Um, and so we, we have the idea of, in our society, that if you have the money, you have the right. So uh, if I buy a property, I should be able to do whatever I want with it. And people uh, resent even simple land use legislation uh, or, or other any kind of other kinds of social engineering, for example. Um, so the idea that this, the capitalist idea that, you know, money talks and shit walks is, is kind of an old idea and it's a vulgar idea. Yeah, but you can see that there's some there's some truth to it as well mm -hmm. in, in our society. So uh, you know what is happening in the north end is that is that the peninsula of Halifax is becoming increasingly desirable, and it does not get any bigger. Uh, so people who who 20 years ago wouldn't have thought about living uh, north of North Street um, now are happy to live north of North Street. Mm hmm. You know, you, you can see it in the streets, you can see it in the, uh, in the shops. Um, yeah, where, where you grew up on Creighton Street, ju just, just one block away from Gottingen Street, mm -hmm. there's now a very fancy bakery. Okay. It's a very nice bakery. I, I go there quite often. <laughs> uh, and, and things are, are too expensive, but you, know, you say, oh, well, what the hell. I guess it's great to spend $8 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> wow. Um, and and the, the person who owns the bakery, uh, a, a very sweet man, uh, gave baking lessons to many of the community uh, women uh, when he first moved into the neighborhood, just to as a kind of, a, well, here I am in the community. I believe I have, and I, as often as I go in there, I believe I have never seen a black person in that bakery. Mm. So, you, so you, you wonder about this, you know, and, and uh, you know, I think if I were to ask you and Jay to come up 10 reasons why, wouldn't take you very long to figure it out. My white friends often say, well, that's mostly because maybe a lot of black folks can't afford uh, $8 coffees. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that has a, has, is somewhat true. I, I'm not sure how welcome a lot of black people are in a restaurant full of white people. I, you know, I, you would be in a far better position to know that than I. 
um, I, I do know that it's, it, it, I always feel uncomfortable as much as I like their croissant, I, I feel uncomfortable going in that restaurant for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, I, I did kind of feel it the last time I was home and that's, uh, you know, that was the year before COVID, I believe. And I brought the kids down. I went for a walk down Creighton Street and there were a lot of changes. Um, all the properties that used to be owned by the Provo, the Provos, they're all renovated. Um, they look great. You know, Nanny's old house is, is renovated, looks great, but it uh, had a very different feel. And I think that's be has a lot to do with what you're saying. The, the, res the, the, the makeup of the people that are walking down the street is very different. I'm sure you saw a lot fewer black fewer faces on the on Creighton Street when you walked down a, a year or two ago, Derek. Yeah, it um it uh definitely it uh the the, the crowd did seem younger. Yeah, and um much younger than me at the time actually. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to touch that, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry me me either. Your problems with aging, okay? <laughs> but uh, in saying that, though, like, uh, and then you go uh, just a block down from in onto Godican Street, there was a lot of construction. There was, um, but there are still some of the same old shops, like, um, like Kit Kat. Uh, it's still there. Like I took a picture and I sent it to Jay. Jay, what what did you think about that? That was I, I thought it was funny, but it does kind of have uh, it does kind of lend itself to some type of social commentary there, though. Oh, for sure. I think um, I mean the fact that it's still there is is pretty cool, just because it's it's such a neighborhood haunt. And I think in that area of Godican Street is still a lot where Uniac Square is. I mean, I haven't been back to Halifax in about three years and haven't really been in, in that area since I was a kid. But I'm still gathering that, that that part of the community is probably still the same within the way they always meant it to be on some level. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So maybe that's the reason why, you know, some aspects of those things haven't changed. But as far as the development goes, I find it crazy here in Toronto, just everything getting developed so much that it does sometimes take away the spark of the community, you know, because prices are high. People are moving more suburbs to be able to get affordable housing based on what they can afford, um, you know. But Toronto in this area, in my neighborhood, it's become a little bit like hipster, you know? So that, that's because you live in it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm still, I'm still hip, although my hip is a little bit sore now. But yeah, uh, no that kidding. goes back to the old age thing. <laughs> so, Derek, you, uh, when Heather talks about growing up in the North End of Halifax, uh, for her, the North End was an area between Cogswell and North Street. And that was the boundary of the black community. Yeah. Uh, and she's, she talks about Creighton Street almost like it was a room. A room that her mom was very comfortable in leaving her not unattended, but, but alone in that room. Because there were so many other adult, loving adults uh, and uh, other kids to play with. But, but it was a, commu a community space in the very best meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, uh, uh, imagine that today, a mother say, say okay, little, little Heather, you can go out and play. You're only five years old. There's the door, there's the street. Uh, you know, Child Protective Services would be around in about 20 seconds to, uh, to uh, do something about that situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, a lot of that community aspect of, of, the, of the neighborhood in the North End uh, has evaporated. You know, the young people with their Lexus and their fancy jobs are often not the kind of people who are gonna spend a lot of time at home uh, in, in the way that community folks like to. Uh, this is an aside, mm -hmm. uh, but I was talking this morning with my Dean. Uh, about our summer term that's coming up. 
he's doing a project uh, designing, having his students design a school in the North End. And he was, he was very taken with the North End. He's from Portugal. Mm. So he, he, his knowledge of Nova Scotia, he's lived here for quite some time, but his knowledge of Halifax is not as deep as mine would be or as, or as yours would be. So uh, we were talking about this and he was interested in what sites he should use. And he very much likes the multicultural aspect of the North End. And certainly it is that. Um, uh, it, and I would say it's far more multicultural than it was, uh, Derek, when you were growing up in the North End. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but not but. And that, that means that there's the Muslim Academy is now in the North End, for example. Right next to the Muslim Academy is the Good Robot B uh, Bar, a place that I occasionally go to. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, that, that's multiculturalism we're as you know we're working on a theater project in my office on on Goddard Street right now and my clients are very concerned that they not be seen to being gentrifying the neighborhood while making major improvements to their theater yeah and it's almost an oxymoron it's almost mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to improve something without being seen to be gentrifying and, and we're really working on that subject and we're kind of not taking a bright stainless steel approach to everything. Um, but it, it's a hard, that's a hard row to hoe. At, at the theater company, my clients are very good about being multi, embracing multiculturalism. It, it's very interesting how this plays out. Uh, there are events where everybody is white. There are events where everybody is black. Uh, there are events where most people are women. There are events where most people are men. There are very few events where it's, you look around the room and it looks like a cross section through society. We, you know, we continue to hold, you know, different cultural values, different social values. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of an, in a way, a natural thing you want to hang out with, or you do hang out with people that, who have similar opinions to yours or similar views about many aspects of life yeah true that's that's interesting the um the the north end the creighton street in particular was was in great need of structural improvement especially when i was growing up um so when i when i first got back um i think it was the first time i brought the kids it was like 2000 for 2005 when I first brought Malachi I think and walking through the north end I was like oh this is great you know that old house that was dilapidated it's gone and but then the last time I was there it was like ah that house is good it was like a different feeling even mm -hmm. though there was structural improvement it uh it didn't lend itself to the feel of the north end anymore yeah um yeah. and and the you know some of uh, some of my friends would call the owners of those houses the slum landlords. Mm. Maybe they were, but they were also providing housing for people that cannot find housing in the North End today. Yes, mm -hmm. most people have been moved off the off the peninsula and are living somewhere on the mainland now. Really, um, wow. it, it, you know, Halifax has, has changed, and those those kind of social pressures are are profound, insidious. And really, di really difficult to get to the heart or or, or the root of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I do know that you used to sit on uh, a number of um, or used to in involve yourself in a number of city planning, like meetings and whatnot. Have Have you sat in on anything like that recently? Or, well, uh, Halifax has has new planning legislation uh, called the Center Plan. Uh, and and we're beginning now to see it flesh out. Um, if you were, if you and I were to walk up Goddard Street today, there are parts of it you would not rec literally you would not recognize. Mm -hmm. wow. So cities have to grow, or seem to have to grow. Uh, we we haven't figured out how not to grow cities. Uh, our, the only way that we seem to find prosperity in society is through growth. Mm. Uh, so more people. 
And, uh, you know, Nova Scotians have even warmed to the idea of immigration because they've finally figured out that immigrants actually buy groceries and <laughs> building materials and clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, like, like how long did that take to figure out? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, you know, so a health in Halifax is growing. And, and I think rightly planners uh, want the growth to be downtown for environmental reasons and social reasons. As supportive of business, it's, it means you don't need to drive your car for an hour to get home and then an hour to come back to work. Uh, so so I, we're all in favor of increasing urban density, but everybody knows or sometimes prefers not to, not to, they prefer to be willfully ignorant, but this is a way of displacing the poor. And in, in a racist society, often the poor are people of other ethnicities yeah mm -hmm. again you didn't need me to tell you that but. no but it's um it's a formula that's uh it's even if it's identified it's hard to change <laughs> yeah yeah oh, it, well, honestly i mean I, I i i and friends and and uh, my work at school and uh my work in even in business uh deals with these kinds of issues all the time, and frankly, many of them are are there. There simply are, don't seem to be answers for many of, of these social issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now we have an affordable housing uh, initiative in Halifax. Any most builders who build will get a slight bonus if they offer affordable housing mm -hmm. to people. Uh, now, so that sounds good. It probably is good. Uh, but it doesn't doesn't mean that you, that they're allowed to or should promote uh, uh, black people living in in those affordable units or or people of any ethnicity. In fact, it's probably not even legal to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So you know these these are hard nuts to crack. True. Yeah. Just uh, from a uh, a personal level. Um, what is going on with uh, the Bloomfield complex, uh, the, my old uh, workplace there? Well, your old workplace is still there, you'll be pleased to note. <laughs> there's a big plaque on the wall that says, Derek used to work here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, those, if those walls could talk. <laughs> well, I think we, we've all played basketball in that gym. I, I remember playing against uh, both of you on, at, one, at least at one time there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I still f think fondly of that uh, project. Presently, in, it, nothing is happening on the site, although uh, there have been signs put up and it looks like, it looks like something is going to happen. I, I must say, having been involved in some of the earlier aspects of Imagine Bloomfield, uh, I know that a lot of community people who spent a lot of time dealing with that project were very dissatisfied with the way that both the city and the province handled that whole project. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems now that the, the the big idea is to, oh, let's we'll just give it to the developers and they'll figure out what to do with it. Yeah. So do you think do you think they tear it down and build condos or yep. whatever? It's exactly what I think they'll do. Yeah. And how is the building structurally? Is it still, I mean, I know it's an old building, but it's still holding up. So JS, you remember there's three buildings on that site. That's true. One of them is so, is so decrepit that it, people will say, oh, well, there's nothing we can do but knock it down. Right. Uh, the second building is, uh, is less injured. And, and the old school where we used to play basketball, uh, mm -hmm. uh, seems to be okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it could be a school again tomorrow if someone thought that was a good idea. Right. Maybe not tomorrow, but in six months, you could turn it into a school again. Yes. Um, but that's, that, none of that will happen. I believe that all three schools will come down and um, um, a condominium or a series of a new developments will take place. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the demographic of the North End is now? Like, and how has it been over time compared to, well, obviously now what, it, what it's like compared to what it was? We've been here long enough. I, I, I'll answer that kind of in a spectrum of answers. Yeah. 
Perfect. Uh, when we when we first moved in to the community, the we, uh, people were just getting older and older. Uh, but now those older people have either left the community or, or, or left the planet. <laughs> they're out uh, in space now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they've left this earthly plane and they've gone yeah. somewhere else. We, yeah. You guys can do another podcast about that. Um, I think that that's no longer the case. Younger people are now moving into the North End and they tend, uh, f according to my observation, uh, tend to be uh, young professionals, young uh, people that, they, that we would associate with the creative communities, mm -hmm. uh, graphic artists, young architects, painters, artists of one sort or another. People I hang out with and I and like, but I wouldn't tell you that there's a huge amount of um, uh, uh, diversity as it relates to ethnicity. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, some part of this has to do with the economics of racism. Um, some some has to do just with the comfort of wanting to live in a community where you're not the only black person on the street or the only. Um, I have, I have lived in communities where I'm the only white person on the street. <laughs> That's another story. Uh, we, we can talk about my African adventures another time. Yeah. Uh, uh, although I well that even even that was very different, I, I would say. So um, I, you know there's a there's a there's a sense that it, it is changing again. It's becoming richer, younger. Um, uh, I I think that people are more sensitive around the question of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement has been really important and has opened a lot of eyes. Uh, Eyes that should have been opened a hundred, a thousand years ago. Yeah. yeah. But okay, it's better now than never. So everybody gets that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that many, you know, many um, institutions, the city of Halifax, um, the, the some of the folks that I deal with in the creative communities of Nova Scotia are very concerned about issues as it relates to treaty rights for Mi'kmaq people, yeah. uh, ethnicity as it relates to a, a, a spectrum of, of performers or artists represented. Um, so I, I, in many ways, I, I, some of those initials are really positive. Mm -hmm. Others are just tokenism. Yeah. Term, yeah. You've heard the term greenwashing as it relates to the environment. Mm -hmm. you know, someone does something kind of trivial, but it's it's mildly sustainable. So they've got a green building. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of this is just kind of feel good uh, social justice warrior talk. You know that. Yeah. You've heard enough of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, you you actually mentioned that. Let's 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 go on a side note because uh, you have worked abroad and traveled abroad quite a bit. It's been a long time, but you did live and work in Africa, uh, lived and work in Asia, in Asia as well. From uh, like a, a diversity standpoint, uh, your time over overseas, your time in Canada, what comes to your mind when you, when, when you look at those times back when you were living and working and you were the only white person on the street, as opposed to coming to Halifax and again, moving to Creighton Street. And again, you were the only white person Same living thing. on Creighton Street. Uh, like differences, thoughts, what, what, what do you think? So travel is a wonderful thing. Um, I, I've been lucky, I had the chance to study abroad and work abroad. Uh, and uh, uh, I had the chance to, to um, have a number of different kinds of experiences. I, I always think that this is a great chance to learn. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm particularly resentful and I met a number of uh, Canadian people in, in Africa who, whose biggest concern was they couldn't get good pizza and things like this. And, and it just makes you crazy. You think, mm -hmm. you, so you came here for the pizza, did you? <laughs> really? Uh, so, uh, well, you know, it, it is an interesting thing to watch how people react to the same thing that you've just seen or something very similar, and their reaction is so very different. Uh, my experience in Africa was very positive. 
Uh, I like the people I work with. I was the only white person in the office. Uh, I like the people I work with. I thought they were very hardworking and very, very pleasant people. They were different culturally than I was. They're far more Christian uh, than, I, than, I, than I've ever seen people. And, uh, and far more formal than I've see, ever seen people. This, of course, comes as a huge surprise to pretty much everybody <laughs> who have the idea that Africans are every, anything but formal. You know, it's, mm -hmm. So they're very, uh, uh, I, I quite like that. I, I would call uh, the people in my office Mr. And they would call me, they would call me Mr. Peter. And I would call them Mr. Awe or Mr. Mm -hmm. Whoever it was I was talking to. Um, and, and I quite enjoyed that formality of things. Um, so I, I, I learned something about that. Uh, I also learned how difficult it is to, um, to see change in a, in, in a community or you know, right, in a culture that's been heading in a certain direction for so very, very long. Um, it's not hard to see things that are, are obviously self-destructive in any culture. And you think, well, why would you do that? It's obvious, isn't it obvious that this is leading you down the road of, and the answer is, yeah, but that's what we're going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I, I, I do think the question of tolerance is an important, uh, important issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm, I'm, I think of myself as someone who's tolerant, but, not, but, but I, I'm not tolerant of certain things. I'm not tolerant of fascism not tolerant of, of racism or a, a discrimination based upon ethnicity. I'm certainly not tolerant of cruelty. I don't think that's cool. Like, why would, it, why would any of that be cool? Uh, and I'm, I'm very intolerant of religious fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. Very, very. <laughs> let's, not, let's not get down that, too far down that road. Um, and I, I, but, but many people will travel and come back to Canada, even more convinced that well, we've got it figured out in our in Canada. It's the right way to do it, and it's the only way to do it. And those crazy people in Japan or in Nigeria or in England or wherever it is you've just come from, don't don't get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, good point. Uh, do you have any parting words at all before we wrap up? So it's over now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, only to, only to say how, how happy I am to see you two working together on this. I, I, Heather and I have followed the series very carefully um, and uh, I think it's a, it's a really wor worthwhile initiative and I'm very happy to see you both work together. So, thank you, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for asking me to be a part of, of, of uh, Down Home and uh, I look forward to seeing it. Awesome. Yeah. Be, yeah. be gracious with the editing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, we, we try our best. It, yeah, it's it's all been a learning experience and you know, to sort of have these uh conversations in Derek's backyard and to sort of make them uh come to fruition has been cool. And we've learned a lot. You know, we talk about tolerance, you know, there's some things that we wanted to lend our voice to that we weren't tolerant about anymore. It still bothers me that. Nova Scotia sort of still has that veil of uh, segregation. These were just things that we wanted to share and talk about. But isn't it so important to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, there are lots of people who, who couldn't talk about issues of race at all, uh, who, would ha who have difficulty having a, a conversation that even gets close to the issue. Um, and, and in this kind of cancel culture days, uh, it, it, sometimes one has to be very careful about how that conversation is initiated uh, for fear of being called something that you don't think you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And well, anyway, so guys, it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to follow you on Down Home and to have our conversation today. Awesome. Thanks very thank, much. Thank Peter. you very much, Peter. That was awesome. That's and you still, you still make the best burgers I've ever had. On that old, the old... <laughs> well, well, Derek, man, you got to give some credit now. You might have got got a little bit of magic from Peter. Oh Mr. yeah, Peter over here on well, the old yeah. sort of old uh, oil or what was it? Wood stove out the backyard. Uh, yeah. Jay, I, I I taught Derek everything he knows about barbecue, <laughs> but, but I didn't teach him everything I know about barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Breaking new crab, breaking new crab. 
You have been listening to Down Home. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. The song, Breaking New Ground, from The Breakdown. On a high plateau, from the one down below, to the future of the funk, getting lost in the flow, contact with the spot.